everyone. Welcome back to Painted. This is our first live of the new year. And of course, there are glitches today. Um, for those of you who are used to receiving your notifications in your uh, messenger mailbox, the program that we use to do that is down today. So nobody's getting notified in their inbox. You're just going to have to catch me live and Hopefully we'll do some fun stuff that'll keep everybody watching. So today we are doing something a little different. Um, quite frankly, none of these are products I carry in the studio, but everybody has been asking me about these. So I wanted to follow up and actually do some stuff that you can see. Hey, Natalie, nice to see you here. Um, and we're going to be working with gold leaf, both Comp uh, composition gold, uh, Tammy Say Flakes, and real gold. So we're going to be doing a few different kinds of things. We're going to start out with the pr beginning of the process and kind of walk you through it all. Since I have stuff in different stages here, you should be able to see what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is, hey, turn the camera down. Sorry for my hands in this. We are in an odd position today because I got crap all over the table. So here's, if you look at this, I am gilding Buddhas. I, I, my next window is going to be a Zen garden, so I needed a bunch of Buddhas to gild. Um, and obviously, um, I gild them myself instead of paying for somebody else to do it. And I love gilding, so it makes me very happy. So the first thing we're going to do is um, you can see I gild things in parts uh, just so I don't get out of control with what I'm doing. It helps me a great deal to do it in sections. And look, I got a little piece of hair that's stuck from a brush. Hey, Sherry, nice to see you here. Okay, so I have got... More, uh, Morden gilding is gilding with oil-based sizes. I use Duck's Quick Size, which means that in the application... Uh, I have uh, an hour to three hours, depending on the humidity and the temperature and everything, to um, have this set up. But what I do first, I blow all the dust off of everything. Hey, Lori, nice to see you. Um, so oil-based size can be used as a size it can also be used as a top coat if you don't mind what an amber colored top coat now if you look in my jar it looks pretty beat up i've had this for a while a skin forms on the top i don't stop that from happening why because it actually seals up my size um instead of me having to put plastic down there so i dip my brush in and i smear it on um this is not the same as water gilding uh, which is a very traditional gesso, then bowl, uh, then um, a burnishing an a, a burnishing agate, um, gesso bowl, water-based size, and a burnishing agate. That's how the basics of water gilding are. The details are a little more obviously complex than that. So the first thing I do is I brush on a bunch of size. Now... I could leave it like this, but I won't. Why? Because it takes longer for the size to set up than what I'm about to do. I'm closing up my size. And three hour quick size sets up for gilding in one to three hours, and then you have one to three hours for it to be usable. Um, meaning you can apply leaf to it within that period. There are longer sizes, meaning they take longer to set up, and then they stay open longer. Those are 12-hour sizes, and for somebody who needs to set up a size the night before and then have the whole day to gild, 12-hour size is what you want. For smaller project, quick size is better. Now, you see I brushed this all on, and I cleaned my towel off on a piece of paper towel, and there's a reason. I'm gonna go back in and brush off about 50% of what I just applied. Why? Because then this will set up and dry evenly. I won't have any pools and crevices and it will be actually ready to gild sooner because if I leave it on, the thin part, all like I just applied it, 
all the um, thin parts will set up to size long before anything that might have pooled in here, like in the toe cracks or in the draping. And then I will be kind of screwed so that I can get a nice smooth finish here and then everything gets gummy down in the crevices and it leaves really unattractive dimpled texture. And I keep wiping off my brush again and again. So I'm not just moving it around, I'm actually removing it. Um, and it also allows me to check for bristle hairs because, you know, my brush sheds from time to time so I can pull out bristle hairs. Hey, Bob, nice to see you. Um, Bob, I know, does a lot of gilding. Very gifted gilder. So if I screw something up, I'm sure he'll be able to tell me. Um, and let's see. I'm just wiping it all back so that I don't have any puddles anywhere. And then I'll let this set up to, to dry. But I go back and forth several times cleaning out my brush. Um, this is a technique that uh, Mickey Coles taught me at Society of Gilders a couple years back. Um, I had been doing mordant gilding before, but I was not doing it successfully, and this is why. It's because I wasn't wiping back the size. I was having puddle in crevices, and it was really screwing up my work. And, of course, I wasn't bright enough to figure this one out myself. I needed somebody else to tell me that I was screwing myself up. So I'm just constantly wiping my brush off. And you can see, this is not all just coming from the brush itself. This is coming from what I'm brushing off here. And I will set this, and yeah, by the way, this is smelly. Um, it's an oil-based sized, so it's gonna have a little stink to it. Um, the first thing I often get asked is, can you use water-based size with gold leaf? Well, the short answer is yes, of course you can use it. The second answer is not really because it doesn't dry hard enough to support the gold once it's dry. Uh, water-based sizes tend to stay softer, and so you don't get this really super nice hard shine that I can get when I go back and I burnish it. So I'm gonna set that one to the side. And you can see over here, here's my next Buddha. Most of my Buddhas right now are Vietnamese and Cambodian, although I do have a Japanese one that we'll work with later. Now I have done, I'm gonna stick my brush in some mineral spirits over here so I don't have it dry hard and get ruined. I set that to the side at the moment. I set all my, see I put on all that size and then I wipe all that size back off so it's nice and thin and dries even. Now I've already done that with this piece on the back and I am going to apply a green variegated leaf. Why am I doing this? Because I want interesting things. I don't want it all just to look the same. So variegated leaf is a composition metal gold leaf, meaning that it's brass and other metals, that has been treated either with heat or chemicals or both to give you all this interesting pattern. Um, it's not done with real gold because real gold doesn't react that way. And you can see the nice thing with like variegated leaf is if your hands are dry, and my hands are always super dry, you can pick up these leaves with your fingers. See, I can do that with gold, the variegated gold leaf, all the composition metals, because they're heavier. And I'm just gonna drop it on there like that, tap it down with my hand for a second, and then I am going to, hey, Rima, nice to see you. Happy New Year to you too. Now I'm gonna take a second piece and lay it on top. And there's a reason for that. Of course, now it's gonna to stick to my fingers and make me a liar. Yep, it's stuck to my finger now where I gotta to touch its size. Um, this only works if you don't have super dry hands like I do. Um, use a gilder's tip, meaning this, and I will show you how to use that in a minute. But I've laid this on, and the reason I'm doing two sheets is that this is a texture in here, and if I just put in one, it's gonna stick to the top and break in. The second sheet is going to be able to be shoved into the crevices, so I can tap it down like this, 
and you can see it's breaking as I do that, but what those broken pieces are doing is they're getting into all these little details down here. I love how this leaf looks. Um, just so everybody knows, you can't really top coat um, these variegated and colored leaves that um, you see me use. The reason is that the top coats actually change the color here. I mean, yes, you can top coat it, but it will not look the same. I have done tests on all kinds of colors in these leaves, and all of them change when top coated. So I'm gonna stick that there, and I'm gonna stick this. And again, I can do this because my hands are so dry. I have a super dry skin, probably from washing it so much in the sinks trying to get the paint off of stuff. So I'm just gonna tap it on, tap, 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 tap. And then I use this, this is called a, a skewings brush or a mop, and I use it to shove. You can see I'm pouncing it because what that's doing is pushing all the gold, or the, in this case, variegated leaf, into the crevices. And look how that's starting to come through. Look how gorgeous that is. Like I said, I only, I, gel, I gilded the, or sized the back half of this, so we'll get the back of the ears. Um, and we'll, then we'll get right down in here so I don't have to do this twice. All right. And then I'm gonna do that. And then I fold it over. And yeah, I know, I'm just jamming it in here with my fingers. Um, if this were real gold, I'd be handling it a little more carefully like I always do. But this is stiffer so I can manage it with my fingers where I can't always, I can't do that with gold. Real gold, it's really super thin. Um, and if you wanna know what I mean, this is real gold, smaller books. Sheets are about three inches by three inches. I'll find a piece here. Oh, so preferably something that's not stuck stuck to my fingers. So this, let's get it open. This is real gold. And this is super, super thin. And this is actually a double gold. So this is heavier, but picking it up, I want you to see this is how it is on my fingers. Super light. I'm gonna throw it back in the book, but I can't even lay that back down flat. I'm just gonna leave it as a piece in there for later. See, it sticks to my fingers. Where is this? This leaf, I can just pick it up with my fingers, drop it in, and it's way more stiff. Um, let's see if I can tear some. See, I can, do, I can tear it like this. I can come back and get more. I can shove it in different places because it's heavier. Why? Because it's made out of brass and copper and all of these other composition materials, um, but they are all tarnishable metals. So um, composition leaves are not recommended for outside because they will tarnish. And yeah. So you can see I skipped a part or I, le I left a Left it a little too thin, so it's not grabbing there. Big deal, I just wouldn't, this is all done. I'll either decide if I like it exposed like that or if I need to go in and add some more, I can put in another thin coat, brushed back, super thin of oil based ducks quick size. All right, so look how beautiful that is. I mean, just. And I'm not even polishing this yet. So what I've done is I've tapped this in, I've moved it around. I'm gonna do a little bit of this, but I kinda like to wait a little bit. I'm gonna come back up here because I had a couple missed spaces from yesterday. And let's see, I'm gonna take that and tuck that right over there. Now I can put this on my gilder's mat. I can cut it up. Gosh knows, I've done enough of that. I could come in with my hands and tap it in and then fold it back up 
and tap in some more. I know this is a bad angle. Let me move the camera up a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay. And I'm just going to tap it right in there and it grabs right on to wherever I have the oil size applied. And you see, I had applied some up here because we're at sort of the end of the window from when I applied and it's not even really grabbing in there because my size already dried up before um, I got a chance to really get another, you know, get out in here. I applied it too early and it's drying very, it's drying really well. Sometimes I'm so used to when I do this in the warm weather that it stays open much longer because it's humid. All right, so I'm gonna set that to the side and we're gonna do a little bit here. So this one, you can see this guy, I've done a lot of this, and this is copper fo uh, foil, I'm sorry, foil, copper leaf, plain old copper leaf, and this is a patina, a metal that will tarnish if I apply it with, you know, if I apply um, any acids or anything to it, I can get a patinaed look on it. So now you've seen how I have applied it to everything else, I have put that on here, and what I'm doing now, it's dried. I'm going back in and I'm polishing it up a little bit with my skewings brush, taking all the extra stuff off of here. Because there's always a little bit of stuff floating around. And you see kind of, it's like it's snowing copper underneath me, underneath the Buddha. Okay. But that's not going to get it all off. Let's see if I've got what I need in my reach. And it's over here. Hang on just a second. It's the one thing I forgot to grab. Yep, I'm throwing stuff around. I've got mirrors hitting the floor right now. I'm trying not to let it crash so I don't break the glass. Because goodness knows we don't need any uh, bad luck by dropping stuff like that. Okay, so now I've taken a piece of cotton. Hi, Carol. Thank you. Thank you, Rima. I'm going to take a little cotton ball. And I can go back in and I can polish this. And if I don't think I'm getting enough into the crevices to get all the little bits and pieces out, I have Q-tips and mini Q-tips. My favorite mini Muji Q-tips that I buy in the airport, but you can order them online at Muji.com. And I just go in and I get in there with the Q-tips and I get all the extra little skewings out that I might have missed before, see? There we go. And I can go in here. Let me see if I can zoom this a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna take my Q-tip and I'm gonna go in here and in there. Go along these edges and just clean everything up. Now, I'm not going to ever get a perfectly smooth mirror shine on here, A, because I used uh, oil-based adhesive as opposed to doing this with water gilding in the traditional gesso and bowl manner, but also because these are cast items. These are these Buddhas, Buddhas are cast out of resin, and they're not really very perfect themselves. So I'm going to go in, clean that up. So you can see how it cleans up. You can see where it's rough in here. And then I can go in with my little Q-tip and clean things up, make it much shinier, get rid of all the little grungy bits in there. And I will do that on this whole thing, but it makes a big difference. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work with my Japanese Buddha and we're gonna work with the Tamise Flakes, or Shabin, depending on who you're buying it from and what it is, I guess. Um, I'm gonna wipe a little bit of this out down. Well, it's all kind of rolling up and sticking where the old size is, so that's fine. I have this, these Tamise Flakes. These are from Sep Leaf. They're gorgeous. They have sort of a lot of pinks and purples in it. I'm gonna zoom this back out again. Sorry. So you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So I've got a center in the camera and it's on an odd angle. So the directions, if you've read, it, read a Tamise box, it says 
apply size and sprinkle over the surface. Okay, well, if I just sprinkle it over like that, it doesn't look like anything. What I actually have to do, oh gosh, I may have waited too long. My, my size is not sticky at all now. I sprinkle it and then I go in and I tap it in. And I'm right, my adhesive has started to dry too much. I've missed my window because I really wanted to share how this works, but unfortunately it's not gonna grab very much at all. So you can see though what I was doing is I sprinkle it on, I tamp it down, I move stuff around and work it until the hot cup surface is 100% covered like it is down here at the base. I'm sorry, I'm not giving you a better demonstration of this right now. Why? Because my adhesive dried. I mean, I'm holding where I put the adhesive before. There's nothing sticky happening here. So this is what happens with quick size. Not only does it set up quickly, but it'll dry quickly. This is not a stay, stay, stay sticky forever product. But the nice thing is I can easily go over it. And in the technique you just saw with the brushing back of the foil adhesive, it will easily smooth out. I can recoat it. You'll never see that there was a coat under here. It'll dry super hard and I will have a nice finish on there. Sorry, I can't do it on you on this one now. That's my own fault. I screwed that one up. I just dry. That tickles. Am I tickling? Here, Martin, let me poke you in the stomach. <laughs> Only Martin. God knows I love you. Okay, so you can see I just stuck a little piece on there. Um, I don't normally pull them all apart, but when I get something that's wadded up, because Tamise wants to show up in these little tiny wads in boxes, so sometimes I will go and pull apart a bigger piece. Why? Because there's a lot of color in that. Okay. So look, I'm going to stick it here and I can rub it down. So I've got a little bit of adhesive left on here, but not a whole lot. Let's see what else I can pull out here. So if I go in with my hand, yeah, I'm pushing on it a little bit because my adhesive is drier than it should be. <laughs> drier than it should be for me to demonstrate. But look how nicely that goes on. Look how pretty that is. I love these Tamisay flakes. So look how pretty that just went on those hands. Super shiny. Ah. I don't know. I'm just going to poke at this for a minute while we're all ch chatting away. Um, we have new schedule classes. I've just posted and updated. We're going to do some fun projects. There's some classes on making the tiles that I showed you online last, oh, geez, last year. Yep. It literally, God, I can't even say the words. It literally was last year that I made those tiles. Um, and then we're going to be making uh, geode travel mugs. I am working on my own right now. It's uh, in the process of drying, otherwise I'd show you it. But uh, I wanted to make sure I had my technique down before uh, I shared it with anybody else. And then uh, we've got our standard schedules of classes. Baraglamise, intro to foils, intro to various other products, stenciling magic, where I teach a whole bunch of different stenciling techniques. And uh, let's see, what else am I got going? For intro to furniture painting, furniture, fabulous furniture finishes. So we have a lot going on. So you can see, like I said, my... Um, foil size is really dried up. And if you want to know the difference, see, you can see it right here where I applied it. This is the original surface. I, it's, it's dry. It's dry, folks. My own fault. Nobody's fault but mine because I did it too soon. And yeah, I can stick little pieces of this on like this, but that is not the way to do this. That takes forever. So, sorry about the hand across the camera. Reach with my left hand. Maybe if I get my face up in there instead. Thanks, Kathy. I appreciate it. So this is just, um, I'm looking at my watch, keeping track of things. This is a short one today. I just wanted to share a little bit about oil gilding. Again, it is not the same as the mirror high shine gilding you see on uh, 
gold leaf picture frames. This is a more commercial application being that it's done with oil size, it dries super hard. And when you do real gold with oil size on something that's exterior, you do not top coat it because top coating gold outside is the fastest way to make it fail. Um, so it doesn't have, and honestly, real gold doesn't need to be top coated because it's not going to tarnish on you. Um, the other items when we're using these patinaed metals, composition metals, or tarnishable metals, um, if you're going to top coat them, you use a solvent based top coat, meaning you either use a solvent based acrylic or you use something like the ducks over it because this actually acts like a varnish as well. This one will give your surface a little bit of a yellow patina. The, um, water, uh, the solvent borne acrylic will dry crystal clear. However, as we discussed earlier on these patina leaves, on these leaves with any color that's been applied to them, composition golds that have, they're either red variegated, blue, green, whatever variegation they are, or if it's like a solid green, you've seen some of these that they've been treated to turn specific colors. If you top coat them, they will change colors. It's the nature of the chemicals they used on the metal, it's the nature of the metal, and it's the nature of the top coat. It's a combination, it's a chemical reaction, and it changes the color. So um, I'm putting my glasses back on because somebody ask, is asking a question. Short but so much, thank you, Rima. I appreciate it. So we're just doing a quick one today because it's the it's Friday. I'm sure you all want to get going and get home. But I just wanted to introduce you to what's going on here. A little bit of gold happening. Um, everybody knows who knows me at all knows I love to gold leaf. So today's was a treat for me. I'm very happy with what I got to do here, what I got to share with you. Um, any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. If I didn't answer your question because I was looking at what I was doing here, don't hesitate to post the question. I will answer it. I will list the materials that I used once I post this to Facebook. Again, these are not, repeat you, not materials that I sell here. I will leave you some links to where to purchase these things. Um, and this is one of the rare times that I do a... Uh, a video where I'm not carrying the products. I, this is purely instructional. Um, again, very quick, very chatty right now at the end because I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing me talking, but sometimes it's a little hard for me to figure out how to end this thing. So anyway, share, share, share. If you have any questions, post them here. Looking forward to more videos in the new year. Thank you, everybody. Oh, I think I got cold leaf on my nose. Anyway, have a good one. Bye-bye.